Hello, this is astrologynewsreport.com with your hosts, David Anton Savage and Ron Berger. Now we go to our third segment of this week's report, People in the News, where we will analyze the Vedic astrology birth chart of a newsworthy person. This week we delve into the birth chart of Lou Reed, the legendary rock musician who passed away last week at the age of 71. And since there is no published birth time, we had to do a rectification. Lou Reed was born on March 2nd, 1942, in Brooklyn, New York, and we are using a time of 7 a.m. to cast the chart. He was a very unusual man with a very unusual destiny, even for a famous person living through the psychedelic disco of the 60s and 70s. He was truly a unique guy. Lou Reed was the founder of the proto-punk band The Velvet Underground, which was discovered by Andy Warhol, and he was one of the very first openly bisexual celebrities, a very taboo thing to do at the time. All right, well, right off the bat, we find that he was born on an eclipse day, which gives a good deal of uncertain, unstable energy, and a very interesting chart indeed. Using 7 a.m. gives a rising sign of Aquarius, a humanitarian sign with concern for the downtrodden of society and with a tendency to be idiosyncratic. Just take a listen to much of his music. There are plenty of songs featuring the underclass of marginalized people, junkies, streetwalkers, sexual minorities, cross-dressers. His rising degree is in the nakshatra of Dhanishta, symbolized by Shiva's drum. Uh, such people are prone to uh, beat out their own rhythm in life, that is, marching to their own tune. I find that the single most striking thing about him, and something which is quite easy to forget now that he is completely acknowledged as a legend, an icon, and as a seminal figure in the history of rock music, is that he busted his butt in the music industry in relative obscurity putting out a lot of music uh, over the course of five decades before getting the full measure of his due. Just compare his career with some of his contemporaries like David Bowie and Iggy Pop, and you get an idea of how slowly the real fame came to him to properly match up with his impact on rock music. All right, well, let's address this issue of why he was held back, so to speak. And the first place to look is at the analysis of his first house. A major clue is that he has the sun, the planet of royalty and prestige, conjunct the eclipse point Ketu, the shadow planet of dematerialization. And the very next thing to look at is Saturn, the ruler of Aquarius, and therefore the ruler of the first house. In this chart, it is debilitated and very weak at the extreme end of Aries, on the cusp of the third house of skills and efforts. Right there, we have an astrological one-two punch clearly showing that he would have quite a delay in gaining recognition. And it must be said, there's another factor here in his chart which gives us a clue to his unusual path of destiny. Although he has a full moon in Leo in the seventh house, in the nakshatra of Maga, whose symbol is the royal throne room, the potential power, as we have noted at the start of the segment, is severely compromised because Lou Reed was born on the day of a total lunar eclipse. Good point, David. Having a nearly full moon in the seventh house normally would be quite positive and strong, but its lord, the sun, is deeply conjunct the eclipse point K2 in his first house of self. As such, his moon being just hours away from the eclipse, which is very powerful for the occult, is still unstable energetically and doesn't give him the uh, recognition that he would. The moon in the seventh house normally shows you get recognized by the public in some way. Yes, and ultimately he was, and so yeah. basically accolades and recognition for his major contribution to popular music did not come until the 1990s when he was in his 50s, starting with the induction of the Velvet Underground to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and it wasn't until this century, toward the end of his life, that his enthronement, his kingship, if you will, 
as one of the most important and influential figures in rock history was completely understood and acknowledged. Turning to the Vimshatari Dasha periods for his lifetime, we can see that he was in a Rahu major period when the wider public recognition began, and there is Rahu in his seventh house with his nearly full moon. This would definitely help to put him into the limelight and get public recognition. Well, since we are taking a look at his Vimsatari Dasha periods, let's take a look at what was happening in his chart at the end of his life. Sure. Um, in 2004, Lou Reed entered his Jupiter major period. In medical astrology, Jupiter has rulership over the liver. His Jupiter is in the fourth house of outcomes and conjunct two malefics, Mars, the planet of surgery, and Uranus, the planet of disruption. Also in this chart, Jupiter is the ruler of one of the Maraca houses, that is a house of death, which is the second house. The Maraca houses are used to help calculate the timing of death, especially as one gets older. Since he had abused drugs and alcohol quite heavily, contracting hepatitis in June of 1964, there would be no doubt of some kind of pre-existing condition of serious liver damage accrued over many years of overindulgence. And even though he got a liver transplant in May of 2013, he passed away due to complications from the surgery. Again, Mars with Uranus in his fourth house. I feel like the fourth house of his chart was very much like a, a kind of underground for him in his life. The fourth house is the house of the parents, deep-seated feelings, and the house of outcomes. Lou Reed had a very intense combo there in the fourth, as we just mentioned. So we must also mention this. In 1959, when he was 17 years old, his parents committed him to a psychiatric hospital for eight weeks for a course of electroshock therapy. Uranus deeply conjunct Mars fits the bill for this notorious treatment. On top of that, let's not fail to mention the fact that Venus, who rules Libra, the fourth house sign, is in the twelfth house of hospitals and institutionalization with Mercury, the planet of the rational mind. He did have a reputation for intense mood swings, at times exhibiting a really vicious temper. Yes, David, he was a very complex guy on many levels, and even though much has been made of his homosexual trysts, he did marry three times to a woman, or two women, and yes. including his final marriage to, well, we have to put that in yeah, these days, yeah, right? that's right, yeah. Including his final marriage to a yet another idiosyncratic artist and fellow musician, Laurie Anderson. Alas, there is so much more to be said of Lou Reed's life and times, but we have to end it here. Check in next week for another edition of the astrologynewsreport.com.